so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here because um, as you guys know, if you're feeling engagement right now, if you're feeling excited, if you want to play this code that I have for you, I want to just marinate in that for just a second. This is why it's so powerful. Engagement, engagement's everything in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you have the best strategies in the world and you know all the um, research-based everything for a particular thing for, to help students, without engagement, you know, where does that leave us? So I've, I'm just, just super honored today to be able to share with you some things that have made a huge difference, huge, huge difference for me. And I'm showing you my uh, Kahoot dashboard. Uh, you just would log into Kahoot.com. I want to I talk to people real quick that are brand new to Kahoot because I know we have people out there that are brand new to Kahoot and might be getting a little nervous right now. Please don't worry about that. Please don't. Please just sit back, relax, and watch the webinar. If you want to try to log in and play or figure things out, that's great. But this, like Isabella said, will be available in replay. So you don't have to worry so much about, am I able to play this right now? This is um, actually, let me just back out and look at my home screen. When I log in, this is my dashboard actually. And so there are some options up at the top for me. And I'm going to go, I'll come back to these a little bit later, but I'm going to go to just Cahoots because I know I have created Cahoots and they're just sitting right there in my, in my dashboard in the order that I engaged with them last. So I'm going to pick the one called engaging ELs from a distance. And that's because that's what today is called. <laughs> but again, if you are brand new to Kahoot, we get this a lot that, and I don't, I want you to realize that that means this is a first time for you. It just means it's one of those first times Brene Brown talks about. It's uncomfortable, it's cringy. Don't worry, don't worry about it. And um, think about your language learners. What would you tell them? You would tell them to relax, to pay attention, and things get easier day by day, right? It will get easier and easier. So you're going to love this, but right now you could just watch. But if you want to play, I'm going to make, a, a, I'm going to just teach everything today through a Kahoot. So like you were seeing before, you were seeing all of my questions in here. So you guys could be cheating right now if you want to. I could click show answers and show myself the answers, but I'm not going to let you cheat that much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click play. If you didn't see what I did over here in the left, I clicked play and I have two options now. I have present, which is what I'm going to do. And that's what we normally do in our classroom. We play Kahoot on our whiteboard. There's another option here to assign a Kahoot, and we're going to come back to that at the very end. And if you don't know about it, you're going to love it. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm so excited and I'm not even playing. Okay. So I've got two options, right? Team mode or classic. We're going to go with classic today and you could play around with team mode later. It's fantastic if I have all the students in front of me and I haven't even explored if I don't, but I'm just going to make sure, you know, I'm playing regular classic and um, click this little arrow. Did you ever, I mean, I know a lot of people already know about game options, but just in case you don't, click that arrow and look through everything that's available. And this is not even a premium thing. There are options available. Some, some I'm sure are, but the one that has always been available, premium or not, is uh, the one that I'm gonna click is called Friendly Nickname Generator. I'm going to turn that on. You know what that means? That means you don't get to choose your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do want to see your names. I do, but uh, not always in my classroom. Sometimes I assign names to the students so that they, uh, so that I can track how much, how, how, if they're getting better. But if you look at your device right now, Oh, you know what? I should mention something. If you're trying to play Kahoot on your laptop and watch me, you should open another window because you have to see the screen and play. 
So really the easiest thing is to play on your device. And if you're new to Kahoot, it's going to tell you, look up, <laughs> because this is just where you mark answers. This is where we play. I know I've got some veteran people out there going, Carol, yes, we know, let's play the game. But uh, I also know we have a percentage of folks who are brand new. Ah, did y'all just see Emily Francis on the screen? Uh, this is uh, because when I made this Kahoot, it's very easy to just drop a YouTube link it, so that something is playing while people are logging in. And so kids aren't just sitting there, they're watching a video or something while other people are logging in. That's when we're all together. Look, there's Carlota Holder. So I have a video that I'm playing in, uh, in the background. But again, I know that some of you guys are veterans and that's totally fine. I'm gonna try to show you some stuff that maybe either you haven't seen or maybe you've seen it and we have a chance right now to think about it with the language learner in mind or think about it with how do I support a content teacher if I am a language learner teacher. Look at these kids. Look at these kids in my classroom, brand, brand new, beginning of the school year, Skyping with, uh, I believe that's Natalie Cravenger's class from, from uh, I think she's in Maryland. And <laughs> this video is so fun. Look, we're almost, we're over 200 players, but look what that student, I don't know if you can see it, but he's holding up a picture saying, we are thinking. I love these little video snippets of the students. I have permission, of course, to share these from their parents. Um, I love when uh, we see that this distance, this opportunity to connect with people outside my classroom amps up the learning. It just amps up the, uh, the engagement, of course. Authenticity is going to do that. And so I love that Kahoot. Right now, that's what you're doing, right? You're playing a connected Kahoot. You're playing with 241 people, 244 people. <laughs> I'm giving people a chance to go ahead and log in. And then we'll go ahead and get started. But it's still climbing. So I'm going to talk just for another minute or so, maybe when we get to 300. Um, I know we had a thousand people register, but about half that many usually come to webinars because people are smart. I said this before when we were when we were first logging in, people want this link to watch the video later in replay. So I would imagine we just we have a few hundred people who could come live. And so we can absolutely wait for that number to slow down. Or maybe we just hit 300 and take off. I bet maybe that would be a good idea. Oh no, it's still climbing. But look at the video. <laughs> look, we're Skyping with Dr. Jonathan Lose right there. He's an archeologist and the kiddos who are normally nervous about speaking out because there was a real person on the other side of the screen. Um, absolutely, they, they practice, practice, practice what they wanna say and then they come together to um, to talk. They'll just cut, they'll just more easily forget that they're learning another language when we have some authenticity in there. So we always use Kahoot. If we have a guest speaker, or if we have any kind of field trip, anything like that, we're gonna make a Kahoot about it to build background for the kids before the learning happens before you connect with the person, right? And then we made a Kahoot about Dr. Lowe's. And then we played the Kahoot about him, the Kahoot about him with him. <laughs> and I mean, that honors your guest, right? And again, the students are getting an opportunity to practice, practice, practice their English so that they can interact with the people on the other side of that screen. That's why I know distance learning and remote learning can work. Uh, Kahoot can help us quite so much. We're still climbing. We're getting close to 300. I think 300 is a good spot to stop. Um, so yeah, I just appreciate it. If you haven't noticed, I am a, I was a teacher, a newcomer teacher, an English language development teacher, but I also taught, I, I started as a special education teacher. I was a bilingual teacher. I was a dual language trainer for our secondary awesome teachers. I um, taught middle school, high school recently, but I started in elementary. And so I've taught content. I'm a 
bilingual Gomez and Gomez dual language trainer, still certified trainer. I will continue to go back and get that. I'm still a certified Abydos writing trainer, writing coach and trainer. Uh, not going to let that go. <laughs> you got to go be critiqued by these people to keep these certification or the, the writing one. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I, I just appreciate everybody that's here. I know it's still climbing. I see people are still logging in, but don't worry. You'll be able, again, just like in the classroom, if you get kicked out, if you didn't get logged in, just watch, you'll be fine. You're going to get an opportunity to play this again. I don't know if you know that, but you will. So you're cool. You're good. We just want low stress, right? That's everywhere. We want to learn with low stress. Yay, we're hitting 300. Let's go ahead and get started, even though I know we could, um, I know we could keep climbing. And I probably should have put this in uh, full screen mode before. So sorry about that. All right, let's get going. I do not have music on this so that you can hear me. We've turned off the music from my screen. So this one on your device, it should say no need to answer this question because it's not a question. It's not a question. And now you are able to put in screens like you're giving a presentation. So there's no question. I'm going to talk to you about this screen, right? Engaging language learners from a distance. That's what I want to talk to you guys about today. And I'm going to be using some words that many of us know now synchronous and asynchronous, right? So I'm going to be talking about synchronous and asynchronous learning. And you'll see here that I put a little definition. Synchronous means when we're synced up at the same time. Right now, even though we're not together, we're synchronous, we're synced up. But there's also, there are also opportunities for you to use Kahoot and have your students learning in an asynchronous environment. So when we're not together, but like between now and tomorrow, sometime now and the end of the week. So we'll be looking at both of those uh, by the end of this presentation. All right, here come the questions. I think, oh, my face is covering next. <laughs> All right, let's go. This one's a quiz question. Are you ready? Oh, you can choose more than one. Think about that if you didn't know that. You should choose more than one because you get more points. This is a multi-question answer. And it reads like this. Language develops when students have, oh, man, all 300 of you were very fast. Okay, <laughs> actually, no, actually it had 10 seconds. So I didn't read it fast enough. Sorry, sorry, that went fast. And a lot of these I did, maybe I could, I don't know if you know that, but you can change it. I can change it to 20 seconds. I can change it to 60 seconds. So I'm getting a formative assessment right now because I see only about half the third of the people answered. When I play this with my students, again, I'm going to change that timer and give people more time the next time that we play this. But this gives me an opportunity to talk about a few things. And this is what I'm doing in my classroom. This is what I'm doing in my classroom. I'm not going to the next question. I'm using Kahoot as an opportunity to teach something, even to the students who already know this. I want them, I want everybody to get something out of this before I move on. We can play it fast later. But students know the first time we play it, it might be that we're just going to learn something. So language develops. I want you guys, I know you're at home. I'm taking this from Stephen Fleener, my, um, my colleague. He tells people, I know you're at home, um, but you can still read this aloud and get a lot of value out of it. So this is what it sounds like. Language develops when students have comprehensible input. Read that with me, okay? Language develops when students have comprehensible input and low stress opportunities for output. So if I want you to talk to other people and own this vocabulary and say it, you know, I don't want my students to say, I want them to say circumference of circles, not the thing around the thing or the thing through the thing. <laughs> I mean, that's normal, but I want to give kids an opportunity to feel comfortable with academic language. And I'm talking about all kids. That's all kids. Unless they're speaking way over your head, they can use some choral reading. And a lot of times people say they won't do that. They won't. My middle schoolers won't read with me. Do it in a cahoot. Do it in a cahoot and tell the class, 
we're doing this to help you sound like a mathematician and everybody, the more academic you sound, the smarter you are perceived. And so language opens doors. So for our vocabulary today, we're all gonna read it together. That way when they do have conversations, they feel more comfortable saying it this way. So that's just a language lens for what we're doing here. Uh, but I know my English learners sitting in a math classroom need the opportunity to read with me. So I read and then we read and I might have them read it too. Another thing I'm going to do is when I'm teaching, did you notice that? Did you know that you can pull the image back up and teach from the image? That I can use this for vocabulary. I specifically put it to create a complete sentence so that I could say language develops when students have low stress opportunities for output. That's what it sounds like, kids. Now everybody read it with me. But I can pull up the image. Visuals and gestures are the two things that our newcomers who move very, very quickly say they need in content classrooms. If, they, if their teachers would just point and gesture like gravity, rotation, <laughs> things like that, it, it helps with, uh, they understand more English every day. And so they want visuals and gestures, just point to what you're talking about and they have so much more comprehension. So how important is it in your cahoots that you include visuals? Very. <laughs> and what's so great is Kahoot has just a very, very extensive image library. All right, let's go to the next question. I know some of you are going, okay, okay, Carol, let's go, let's go, let's go, I wanna play. Oh, look, Groovy Octopus. Good job, Groovy Octopus <laughs> and everybody else. Okay, another quiz question. What do you think leads to a 19 point percentile gain in achievement? What do you think it is? We'll talk about this video in just a second. Yeah, well, I mean, you can look at it because it gives you a hint. It gives you a hint. I've already got 270 people answering. Oh, look at that. Look at that. What do you think? Do you think it's homework? Do you think it's small class sizes? Leads to, research shows leads to a 19 point percentile gain in achievement in studies. Lectures? <laughs> okay, so let's think about this now. Let's think about this. If we go back and watch this video, we don't have to watch it all, but I do want to point out this was a Flipgrid. If you don't know Flipgrid, I would just highly recommend that you think about Googling Flipgrid and looking at this easy to use student. And students are able to asynchronously work with each other. This student is recording to the Flipgrid and she's with another student. She's with another student here, but it's she just very creative. At the end of her video, she brings in the other student on a cell phone and they present together, which was a bit of a surprise. So and a shout out to her science teacher, Jim Garrett, because he just encourages students to be creative. But that was a student to student interaction and to create that. And that's, that's it. Look, 299 of you know, and the other ones might know and you just hit the wrong one. But if you didn't know, having students talk to each other, having it be more student centered, it's actually the research is about properly supported student to student interactions. So structured conversations. So we want to, we want to just have a focus on that. Kahoot has always helped me with that because students have more um, they're, they're less nervous about interacting with each other when we practice language and I'm building background with this Kahoot. I'm building background across the board, 300 and something people. We have different levels of knowledge. So I'm trying to build background and that is going to help them with their student to student interactions. Uh-oh, folks are changing around. Maybe you're not on the leaderboard, but you're getting some information on your device about how you're doing. That's pretty cool. Ooh, this one's gonna be true or false. Do you think we have to create Kahoot games? Our veteran folks know. Do you think that we have to create Kahoot games? That's interesting. So as a teacher, I have to create a Kahoot game? 
True or false? Okay, so lots of us know that you do not have to create Kahoot games. And 52 of you maybe didn't realize that, but here's something I wanna show you guys. Here's the image I'm using for this one. When you go log in and you click on um, discover, remember I found my Kahoots under my Kahoots. <laughs> but if you click discover, you're gonna see Kahoots that are already there. I'm going to point you to look at the Kahoot collections, and I'm even going to point you further to really look for Kahoots that are made by Kahoot. Look, math by Kahoot, history by Kahoot. If you don't know this, Kahoot has hired curriculum writers, and there are Kahoots already out there with all the images that align to, well, I'm in Texas, so we're very excited to see a lot of math cahoots aligned to the teaks, but there are many aligned to the common core. They have them already aligned out there. And so I don't know why we wouldn't use those. Why would we not use those? Even if those aren't, you're not using those standards. I know there are people all around the world. You can trust these and, you know, cause some, some kiddos are making cahoots and that's a wonderful thing, but you can trust these and they already have the images and look at this, look at their partner. The UN, the UN is reaching their 75th year and there are cahoots made by them in conjunction with Kahoot about some very culturally responsive things right now. I'm just so grateful. And I just didn't know if you knew that, but you don't need to create cahoots. You can go get cahoots. You can borrow cahoots from each other. You can duplicate them. You can take them down, put less answer choices if you want and less questions, but you definitely don't have to create them. Isn't that great? All right. What else? What else? Wow, Fast Iguana, you're on an answer streak. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Okay, this one's a puzzle. So you need to put these words in order. I know that's different. Maybe you're not used to it. But if you look at your device, if you're not used to this, this is a new kind of question. It's not a new kind of question. This used to be called Jumble. And jumbles are, have been there and they're not part of the premium thing. Just now with the latest upgrade, you have jumbles. Ah, look how many of you, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think I didn't give you enough time for that. <laughs> so if you didn't get it done, if you were still trying to figure out how jumbles go, your device lets you slide these colors into order. All right, teachers of language learners. Tell me you're not thinking already in your mind what you could do if you didn't know about this. History teachers love this, putting things in chronological order. Science teachers love this, putting like the steps to doing something in order. In order, spelling, I know, I, I'm not a fan of teaching spelling in a language learning classroom, but at some point I need to start helping them with spelling. And <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. So you move things. I do want to say something though. Um, this is this is the image that I chose for teachers deserve a huge raise for their efforts. You know you're gonna have that kid. You know you're gonna have that student that's gonna say, Miss, miss, this could be said differently. Miss, this could be for their efforts, teachers deserve a huge raise. And I'm gonna say, no, no, it can't, because look. There's a capital letter and a period. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do because we're already in high school and the kids born here with perfect English don't put capitals and periods. <laughs> so you can say, no, no, you should pay attention to that. All right, so there's that. <laughs> ah, have fun with Kate. All right, let's keep going. Gosh, we're doing so many things. Okay, here's a quiz question. Oh, another multi-select. You get more points if you choose. There's more than one answer correct. Choose all the ones you think are correct. And, you, and I know this is confusing. This is not part of it. This is the image. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Here's your timer. You have four, three, two, one. Ah! Well, a lot of y'all did. A lot of y'all did answer it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I didn't think about the fact that a Kahoot within the Kahoot might look a little funny. But let's read some of these. Remember, I'm the language teacher. So I'm going to say Kahoot. Connecting with our students opens. Let's read this orange one. Connecting with our students opens a space for them to share with us. That's true. 
Con connecting with our students is easier with a selfie kahoot. If you don't know what a selfie kahoot is, I know a lot of you do because I saw who was in the audience and I know you're already making kahoots about yourself. Selfie kahoot. Connecting with our students helps students find their motivation. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But here is what uh, the beginning of my selfie Kahoot looks like. The Kahoot folks told me about this. When you go work for Kahoot, you have to make a selfie and they have to play it. Everybody in the company plays it to learn about you. So it's exactly what I do with students. You don't, you're not reviewing with Kahoot. You're discovering, you're taking a guess. Uh, we'll play it again in a minute and see what y'all remember. That's what I tell the students, but this first time you're just guessing. So, and, and remember, I have students in my class who speak no English at the beginning of the school year. So I'm using gestures. Miss Salva has one, how, how many children do I have? There's one, two, three. When I pull it back up and show them the image, I don't have 49 children. I usually say he acts like a child, but he's not a child. <laughs> And Brad, my husband, lets me tell that joke. He lets me tell that joke because if kids laugh at it, I can tell who knows more English. Because you have to understand. And they don't want you to know. Some of them don't want you to know how much English they understand. So anyway, a selfie kahoot helps us connect with our students. And that's just a kahoot about me. And we do it on the first day of school. But I would tell you right now is a fantastic time to make a selfie kahoot and push it out to your kids. Even if you made one at the beginning of the year, make one about your quarantine life. And you know why it leads to motivation research shows is because there's an aspect of relatedness that helps people find their motivation. It's autonomous. The researchers agree. I just read Larry Ferlazzo's article about this again. Researchers agree. Autonomy. They have some control over what, what the task is. Um, competence. They think they can get better at it. Think about video games. They lose and fail and fail, but they think they can get better at it. It's like that. Autonomy, um, competence, relevancy. Why is this relevant to my life? And relatedness. And relatedness is how you connect with students. Is there somebody that they respect that cares about them? So making a kahoot about myself is letting me tell my students about me and tell them that I want to know about them. Because the next step is they make one about themselves. It's fantastic. Look, a lot of people moved around. Excellent. Oh, 53 players are on an answer streak. Rock on, guys. Awesome. I didn't mean to say guys. Rock on, people. <laughs> All right. Creating cahoots is just for teachers. I just gave you, I just gave you that one a minute ago. 300 people already. Yes, this is false. It is not just for teachers. It is not at all just for teachers. And if y'all haven't noticed, I'm using that very cool reveal thing. I was like, oh, is that gonna be hard to do? No, when you go in and click the right answer, just look up, it's right there. And you click reveal. And then instead of just the image, it's the image being revealed. Because sometimes the image gives it away. I always want my kids to see the image because I teach brand new newcomers and I want them to use the image to get the answer. But after a while, I might not want them to see the image so fast. So here's the image. If a student makes a kahoot about themselves, they have to use a lot of analysis to do that. I, they can make, the next step is content, right? We're going to make cahoots about ourselves because it's culturally responsive, it's team building, it's fun, it honors student voice, all kinds of things. But I also use this as an opportunity to show them how to make a distractor. I want test taking strategies in here too. And the next step is content. So if I ask you to make a cahoot about the Civil War, I'll give you the right answer. I want you to come up with a distractor, you and your team or you by yourself, because they can do that. Language learners, it's nothing about cognitive uh, ability that I don't speak your language or you don't speak my language. We're adding language to somebody's repertoire. So don't think that they can't very high analysis level work. They can. So give them the right answers and tell them to come up with distractors and they can create the cahoots and that I can't even tell you how much achievement will, um, you should see gains for that kind of a thing. 
amazing, amazing. It's the highest level of blooms now. That's with that image I didn't even mention. When you create something, you're going to remember it. You're going to have to use analysis. You're going to evaluate things. You're going to use all these things. And I want you to think about when you were in high school and do you remember everything on those multiple choice tests? Or do you remember when you made something, <laughs> when you created something? Yeah, it's the gold. It's the gold. All right, here's another quiz question. We only have two questions left. Here's another multi-question, uh, multi-answer. There's more than one right answer. We can honor our students by including them in grade level learning, allowing them no tech ways to create assessments, expecting perfect English, or I'm covering this, forbidding them to use their native language. Yeah, you guys answered fast <laughs> because I know, I know my people. I know you know that expecting perfect English, you might have, you might have hit that one by mistake. Uh, you might be being cheeky like a lot of our students, or it might be new to you. You might be new to the field because in all honesty, when I started teaching, I did think that I needed students to speak a certain way to be able to engage with us. And so now we know that's, that's so far from the truth. And we definitely don't want to say English only, English only in here, or if you're teaching in French, French only. French only in here. Now, now you're the teacher. If you are the foreign language teacher, that could be totally different. You know your goals. But I'm talking about in the math class, in the science class, in the social studies class. Shouldn't you be able to use all of your repertoire? How are you going to think in a language that you don't own? So for that, I would tell you have a language goal. Every day, have a language objective. Today, we are going to say the difference between the North and South states are, have a language goal. Over 188 days, you'll move language, and then you can allow students to speak in the language and, and use everything that they have. So we can honor them by giving them opportunities to create assessments too. Look, they're making cahoots on paper. They're making cahoots on paper. The Kahoot has planning pages on their website. This is an, an older one. Uh, you kids can make them at home right now. It's just a big open square with, I mean, it's just a big rectangle. And we ask them to, again, with the selfie Kahoot, come up with a, a trivia question about yourself. What would be the right answer? What would be a tricky answer? You make it true or false. And then we take it into content. And then when we are synced up together, we can play that Kahoot. Um, it's just, it's, or I'm going to show you how we can play the cahoots when we're not synced up together. Oh my gosh, we're at the last question. I'm so sad because this was fun. Oh, it's a poll. It's not the last question. There's two more questions. So this is a poll. This isn't even a, uh, for points. I'm just curious what you think. If I gave you this cahoot right now and you could play it on your device, what, what do you think? Do you think that it would be fun? And just pick, you might think all of these or some of these, but just pick the one that resonates with you most. Do you think it would be fun? <laughs> I love 11 people out there that said it would distract you from your housework. And I offer you this so that it will distract you from your housework. <laughs> But it would be fun. Hey, 148 of you thought that even though you've already played this Kahoot, if you could play it on your own, it would be fun. Agreed. And then help you think about possibilities. Yes, I bet it would. I bet there are so many things I haven't mentioned here. I know there are. And it might be a challenge. 23 people. That's okay. We're not afraid of challenges. Students aren't afraid of challenges. They sit for 24 hours gaming if you let them and it's all challenges and they're trying to get better at them. Challenge isn't a bad thing. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. But I have one last, one last question. It's a quiz question and you can choose more than one. Just click on all the superheroes that you see. Do you see any? You know, yeah, they're all right. <laughs> they are all correct and accurate. And, and if you didn't know, here's my way of showing you that we can put images in the answers now. 
<laughs> Sorry, I want to yell it. It's so great. It's so great to be able to say, select all the ones that are blah, blah, blah. Select all the ones that are not. I know science teachers, math teachers, social studies teachers. Let's just take the language learner out of the classroom for a second and think about all the students who have proficiency like you. Images help us learn. They just do. And, and it gives you more possibilities of how you're going to ask things. But now let's bring those language learners back. And we know that visuals and gestures are the top two things that language learners ask for. Well, that's my own research, but ask them. Ask language learners sitting in a science classroom or in a social studies classroom. If your teacher pointed to things, if they showed you images, would that help? Of course it would. Visuals and gestures are two sheltered strategies we just need to be using all the time because we can do it tomorrow and it doesn't change what we do for the other students. I, this, I wanna take this opportunity to say, if you teach science or you teach math or you teach band or you teach choir, you don't have to slow down the way that I did. I, I am the language development teacher, but could you play a Kahoot before you teach something? Could you play the Kahoot before and then teach your lesson and then play it again after. It's like an anticipation guide. It's like kids getting curious. It's an opportunity to develop just vocabulary. And now I'm gonna show you what you can do to differentiate for those students who might need more time. I'll tell you what I do when we're synchronous, when we're sitting in a grade level classroom and I have some language learners and some of you are worried that they're playing the Kahoot fast and this kid's not going as fast, I help him cheat. I walk behind him and I tell him the right answers. <laughs> I do, I tell him blue, green. Because I, <laughs> I just want him to be in a low stress place to get exposure to English, to be a part of the game for the team building and I know they're gonna have an opportunity to interact with this Kahoot at their own pace. Let's just keep a lens for how we engage students, right? So don't forget, you could pull it back up and talk from the image, just like your PowerPoint. Cahoots are basically an interactive PowerPoint. And engagement is everything. It is. All right, who won? Let's see. You're all winners. Purple Gazelle, third place. You're awesome. Excited, Deb. I know you guys are sitting at home going, it's me, Groovy Octopus. Awesome. And we have a lot of kiddos. Uh, again, I'm going to say, do you want to get better at this? I could get feedback. Gosh, that's a whole other webinar, but there are so many things. You can play again in something called ghost mode, which means we're going to play against the old us. There are going to be ghosts there and it's you. Ugh, that's a whole other thing that's so great. It's, uh, there's so many great things for teaching with Kahoot. What I'm trying to model is how do we teach with Kahoot and review. Gosh, don't stop reviewing with it. It's fantastic to review, but we can do so much more. We can be culturally responsive. We can open a space. We can connect with our kids. We can build vocabulary. We can level the playing field. We can set everybody up for success. We can just do it. You could just do so much. As the language teacher, I would grab like a mitosis or some kind of because I can't teach your grade level content, but I can play a Kahoot about it. I don't have planning time with the teachers like I'd like to have, and they, they would like to plan with me more, but it's not always possible. So if they just give me their scope and sequence, I can go find a Kahoot, play it ahead of time on a topic, and I tell the kids, oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know the answers are correct because we got it from Kahoot Studio, but what are you curious about? What do you think the cells are dividing? Why do you think that's the right answer? Let's write about it. Let's write about what we're curious about. Let's use the words chromosome and chromatid and then go ask your science teacher. They're gonna teach it soon. You think that's not gonna change how that student walks into that class? So language teachers, we need to think about the possibilities we have. And there are so many things that we can do. Um, here is what I'm going to tell you. Remember you said you might want to play this on your own. Here's an asynchronous opportunity. Same Kahoot. I don't have to do anything when I want to give you a Kahoot to play on your own. 
um, I believe you need, well, you used to need the app. The app makes this very easy, but I'm pretty sure you can play now. Isabella will tell us for sure that you can just play on your desktop. What I'm going to do is give you a code. I'm going to assign you the Kahoot and I'm going to give all 300 of you and anybody that watches this in replay, I'm going to give you three days to play this Kahoot again. And we're going to see how you do. We're going to compete with each other whenever you want between now and Friday and Friday around three. Let's do it at the same time. So if you're watching this in replay, we're playing it on uh, the 5th, May 5th. And so I'll give you guys till the 8th. And if, you, if you're watching it in replay, just know this is something awesome. It's basically we've gamified homework. I say we like I'm in the company. <laughs> but I like to pretend like I am. Okay. They've gamified homework. <laughs> so what does this do for us in an asynchronous world where everything is homework? They can play your cahoots. They can. And, and again, if they don't have a device, they can do things on paper. But if anybody has a device, and we have something like 85% of households have a smartphone. I know we think a lot of our houses don't, and the kid might not have a lot of access to it. Or the, the phone might not have, it might, might not be a smartphone. I think 96% of homes have. I have to check my numbers, but it is in the 80s, 80%, somewhere around 80 something percent. So if they could just borrow that phone to play this game, it's all about engagement. If they want to play it, a lot of times they'll find a way to play it if anybody in the house has a device. So all I did was I hit assign instead of play Friday at 3 p.m. my time because that and that's central. It's the same time we started our Kahoot today. I'm going to put a timer. I'm going to go ahead and put a timer. Personalized learning. Look, if you just scroll over these little question marks, personalized learning says players practice difficult questions. I'm going to turn that on. So if you have any difficult questions, you'll get to see what it's like to practice anything. Maybe you took longer. So, so kind of play around with it if you want. Randomize the order. Oh, that's good because we have some stinkers out there that write down the order of the questions and the order of the answers just so that they can cheat. <laughs> that's fine. But you get to random. Oh, I'm not going to do friendly nickname generator. I'm not. That way, when we play and you play with each other, you're going to recognize some names. I know you will. I, I'm sure I will too. All right. So um, you do have to have an iOS or an Android uh, app, it looks like. Oh, wait, Carol. Um, oh, actually, yes, here I am to help. So this is kind of one of the funny quirks with challenges right now. So if anyone can play a challenge on any device, as long as personalized learning is turned off. Oh, okay. If you I'm turn off personalized I'm learning, off. then they can play on the computer, on a phone, on any device. But Thank when it's you on, then it. you need to have an app. Of course. So love keep learning. going. You're, do you're doing great. <laughs> no, I love learning things. And I just learned that. And that is so great. Yes. And that's something we've been trying to clarify. A lot of teachers have been having trouble with that. I'm like, oh, why can't my challenge work? So we're trying to, to make it more apparent, you know, in the future. But just as an FYI, everyone, keep personalized learning turned off if you want students to play on any device. And all you got to, all you got to do, all you have to do is go to your, thank you, Isabella. All you have to do is go to your own cahoots. If you're, if you already play Kahoot and already have Kahoots and any one of them can be a challenge. So you don't have to do anything special except get the code for it. So do one of those with personalized learning so that you can see how that works. That's what I'm going to do. Friendly nickname generator. Nope. I'm not going to do that. Player limit 2000. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we just have till Friday. All right. Here's what it looks like when you hit, when you, when you turn those things on, here is a code for you. So I'm going to ask you to write this code. See, I could copy the URL and put it in Google Classroom. I could copy the URL and email it to my students. I could share it in other ways like Facebook and Twitter and other, you know, here's Microsoft Teams. But you also could just log into kahoot.it, which is how players, I'm sorry that I didn't say that at the beginning. Kahoot.it is for players. Kahoot.com is for the teacher pushing it out, right? That's how you log in. Again, I'm glad I told you not to stress about anything. <laughs> so now you could, if you didn't get a chance to play it before, 
go to kahoot.it and just the fact that the game pin is this, it's going to say you've been challenged. You've been challenged. One of the coolest things right now, we have zero players because I just started this, but I look forward to seeing, um, you know, how many people play it. So this is going to end. I have another one here that ends in a day. This one is going to end on May 8th at 3. Oh, did I put 3 a.m.? I put 3 a.m. I wonder if I can change that now. Ah, here comes this. You can. You can change it now. We actually released this today. <laughs> Look at this, Carol. This is great. This is planned, everyone. So what you can do is where you see it says change deadline below um, I guess on the right there it of is. you know there are 200 yeah. people to 300 people going Carol right there change it yes life. we did get some comments in the chat saying saying that it was 3 a.m. but I was like, oh we can Thank change it later friends. no worries Thank you, friends three and Friday is the eighth and now I'm gonna save it see we're all better together we're better together somebody would I bet you guys are tweeting at me right now 3 a.m. what <laughs> which would be okay because there are people on the other side of the world and it's three, Tan Win, it's 3 p.m. for him at that time. He's in Vietnam. And a lot of y'all know who I'm talking about. He's awesome. All right, I think that, I think I'm gonna stop there, you know, because we're already at 3.50 and um, I know shorter webinars are more friendly right now and I already kind of believe that. So I don't wanna go over an hour. Isabella, I thank you for letting me share. I swear this is it, is, it is so important for us to think about what our students can do when they're not right in front of us and what would they want to do. And, and if I can just take a minute to say those four things again that lead, you, you can't motivate another person, but you can create conditions where more people find their motivation. And one is autonomy. So do they have control? If kids are creating cahoots, there's a lot of control in that. There's, there's choice and when they play and there, there's a lot for autonomy. Autonomy, connected, no, competence. This goes to competence. You want kids to learn things about your content, give them opportunities to play it over and over again to get more proficient. And then if you wanna go higher on Blooms, have them create the assessments and come up with distractors and justify why they did that. It's just great. So uh, autonomy, competence, relatedness, selfie cahoots, cahoots about them, fabulous. That's how I met Emily Francis. And I don't know if y'all know Emily, but she was Emily Fran ESL. Emily Fran ESL. Go follow her. I had put a Kahoot. We wrote about it in the Boosting Achievement book. We wrote about how I put a Kahoot on Twitter and uh, this other class connected with us and it was like magic. My kids felt so important and so honored and they truly were helping the world learn about their countries and things by doing that. Katie DiGregorio, I've played Connected Cahoots with you too and, Cra and Natalie Cranevenger. Okay, so autonomy, real, uh, competence, relatedness, and relevance. And we have a lot of opportunities when we're playing Cahoots and you teach with them like as a PowerPoint to explain to kids the relevancy of what we're teaching and, what, and how, why we're teaching it. And so I just feel like this opens the doors for so many opportunities when we're synchronous and asynchronous. I'm sorry, Isabella, please come back. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, you're fine. I didn't want to interrupt. We just have a few questions. Oh, I forgot for about you. Questions. I know, right? Wait. Not, not too many. Um, the main one is that some people are wondering, they, they just want some more clarification on how you have students create cahoots and what you normally look for when they create a Kahoot, and then how they're also able to create it. And I know you mentioned your awesome paper template. And so some people just wanted to hear a little bit more about that, the process. And then I've been sharing the link out um, to your blog and to our blog that talks about it. So if you just talk a little bit more, that would be great. Right, right. So if you go to that blog, if you go to my blog and you click on the menu, All Things Kahoot, you're going to see, you can download it from Kahoot's website or mine, you can download it. And I've written extensively about how I do this. So I would, I got to update that though, because there's so many new things now, but I will tell you, it has, it looks different uh, all the time. It's what can the student do? What can they do? Not what they can't do. What can they do? 
So if you think about present levels of performance for anyone, and I teach a lot of students who have never been to school before, they're called SLIFE, that's a student with a limit, limited or interrupted formal education. And kids coming into secondary who don't know how to read or write in their native language. So we need to help them be engaged and ramp up literacy as fast as possible in language. And this helps in a big way. So an example with a child like that is everybody can draw. I mean, maybe not great, but a lot of them can draw pretty great. And so I'm using a translator. Remember, we're starting with a selfie. So they can easily give me one trivia question about themselves. It doesn't have to be anything super personal. It could be their age or their favorite hobby or whatever. It's a trivia question. And they draw and they turn in what this is what this is the way I started doing it. They turn in a piece of paper to me and I get one from everybody in the class. And so I might make two because I don't want them to be super long. I make two selfie cahoots. So that first time I did the entering super easy, right? Just making a quick Kahoot. And I try to find an image from the image bank or I try to find something for free, an image that relates to it because the rest of the class definitely needs the image to be able to play. And if I can't, sometimes I ask them if it's okay if I just take a picture of the, what they drew. And so I create the Kahoots. But here's another way. We've absolutely had kids jigsaw and do, especially when we get into content, so we ask the student group to create a question and come up with a good distractor or question and distractors. And my daughter's doing that right now. She's working with kids, you know, to create things so they can do that in asynchronously. Um, but in my classroom, that team, if they have the proficiency to do it, somebody on the team, the kids really like to make their own cahoots. So they can create an account and create a cahoot. They can do that. It's get to know your students, see what they're able to do. What I have seen also is a student that wasn't able to use the technology yet figures out how to use it quickly. <laughs> they figure out tech so fast, partly because they're super motivated to do these. Uh, they see somebody else's selfie kahoot. They want to do theirs. It's a team building thing. So it can look differently. Sometimes they turn it into me and I do it. But as the year goes on, there are definitely opportunities for them to do it. Another thing I've done is I've given three planning pages and told them they're going to do a project. We always use three Kahoot planning pages to organize an essay, to organize our thoughts. Like what are the three big things you want to talk about um, or you want to present about global warming, whatever they choose. These are choice projects, but they, they come up with it by making Kahoot questions. Then they write, and then, and again, they can talk and I can write for them or technology can help and a language learner for sure. But then at the end, they have a Kahoot that we can play as part of their presentation. I mean, it's just the sky's the limit. It doesn't have to be any particular way, but thank you for sharing Isabella, my blog, because I, I wrote about how I was blogging about it when I first started doing it. And it was definitely with paper. I've had college professors call me and tell me they're doing it with their college students. And a lot of times they have them, they jigsaw some real high level information and just have the groups come up with them. I'm gonna quote Leo Gomez and Richard Gomez of the dual language uh, enrichment model, their dual language uh, program. They always say, if 25% of your class can do it, your entire class can do it. Teach to the top, hold a high bar, and then have kids work together. And so they can do so much, even in an asynchronous environment, there are many ways for them to connect. Um, so I would leave it at that. I cannot tell you guys, I know if you've ever like asked Kahoot anything, if you they are so super helpful and so responsive and I am so indebted to Kahoot, but I'm also indebted to all of you for everything you're doing with students right now. Just Google my name, Carol Salva, and you usually probably find my Twitter and my blog. I blog about Kahoot. I have a podcast. And I, I, like I said, I just talk about Kahoot all the time. And I did write this book with Anna Mattis, and we talked at this Boosting Achievement book. And of course, we included it in there in the part about growing leaders. Growing leaders. If you try to grow leaders, gaps will close. Set your sights on growing leaders with your SLIFE students and with your brand new newcomers. And when you do that, they, language will come quickly. 
And so I appreciate all of you. I just want to tell you happy teacher appreciation week. You can't even imagine how much I appreciate you. And thank you, Kahoot. Thank you for letting me do this. You guys have a great day. I will see you over on the Twitter and Facebook world. Thank you.